This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. As the sun sets over a beautiful Beachview neighborhood, and as that couple walks by across the street, not knowing they're on the internet, this is the awesome cast from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, podcaster, video producer, etc., etc., etc. With me, as usual, here in the studio, he is John Chichilla. He is a gadget guru at Big Bank International, and he is not centered on the camera. Now he is. Hello, do, sir. Do you need me to move left or right? No, 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 no. It's fine. They're on tripods. We move them. <laughs> we are the master of we the camera. We can move the entire couch. But, yeah, we'll just move the couch down. I mean, as it is, we have some fun. <laughs> I just, I'll put a post. I'll put a post on social media of how we're. Um, shading you from the sun right now. Just making good use of what's around in the studio here. Uh, also, producer Missy is back with us. Hello. Hello. You've been gone for so long. This show has just been been all over the place without you for like three weeks. Well, no, she actually, was, she was still pulling no, no, the puppet that's strings right. from. She was producing from Thank California you because yeah. I was getting yelled at by that's my aunt right. because I was missing dinner. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, physically, she hasn't been here. And, uh, and we've never been like 3 p.m. to 4. We've been three or four. It would have been four. Okay. Four o'clock. But four's a little early for dinner. Yeah. Well, okay. It's a bunch of old people out there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Missy goes and hangs out at a retirement home for a couple weeks and or something. It reminds so. me of the Seinfeld episode where he's like, I'm not force feeding myself a steak at four o'clock to save myself three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh anyways this is the awesome cast oh hey and um um uh uh mike is here as well hanging out he's he's, he's hanging out back back by producer missy uh as well so this is the awesome cast please check out everything at awesomecast.com and please subscribe to rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch us uh, a video version on facebook and youtube uh, you can ask your google home amazon echo or that home pod to play the awesome cast podcast uh might have to set up like your tune in or something if you like uh <laughs> also and of course we're here live every tuesday on facebook live at 7 p.m eastern and a few other things um if you're catching us later on one of your, or on one of the other outlets the, the the chat room is actually over on facebook uh so if you're catching us over on on twitch or twitter or periscope uh a lot of the conversation uh is is just on facebook but if you want to throw anything our way hit us up on twitter at awesome cash and use hashtag ac uh 456 i saw some people uh, across a couple of shows using our hashtags uh for commentary uh last week so i really appreciate you guys getting involved with that there and asking questions and following up on those platforms you can also email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com where you talk to producer Missy uh, about, uh, you know, just say hi, I guess. Um, <laughs> or if you're interested in being part of the studio audience or um, uh, looking for advertising opportunities, we got those there too. Uh, and also thank you to our streaming partners at riversedgepgh.org and the405media.com. Check your local listings with them for when we may be playing and also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast it's the end of the month and thank you for all of the, everybody that's sticking with us uh, uh for so long here uh matt weller john diggy de gore and john carmen at the coffee club five dollar level We're trying to give you guys a little bit of extra content there as we can um <laughs> And a fan of the show, one dollar level, our longest Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor. Uh, again, you guys can support the show at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Thank you so much for being a part of that. And, and, and it really does show that we're you, people are digging what we're doing if they're uh, jumping in and being a part of that Patreon 
uh, as well. I think so, John, John Carmen had a birthday this week, didn't he? John Carmen had a birthday this week. Happy he birthday. Did. Happy birthday, John Carmen. Happy birthday, Patreon, uh, John Carmen. John Patreon. Car- His middle name is Patreon now. <laughs> There it is. Not there. from New Jersey, John Carmen. Not Jersey, no. <clears throat> not in on Long Island, I'm told. That's a mistake I made a lot when I was out there recently. Um, anyways, it's time for your awesome thing of the week. And Chilla, I know that you 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 warned us that you were going to experiment with this. Uh, so how how did CarPlay 13 um, work out for you? CarPlay in iOS 13 is pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you're a avid traveler constant car I am. rental person i will you for for like four months out of the year yeah. yes in enjoying the car play from site place to place mm-hmm. um so you're used to kind of like the what makes me think of like the old school single app ios menu yeah. launch music player so now like there's like a home screen i see this I, i'm seeing this on the article that you put in here from nine to five Mac. yeah so when you when you kind of go into the main car, you know how on the dash you usually get enter CarPlay and it just takes you to like the iOS style menu with all the apps laid out. Mm-hmm. The home screen is now half the screen. The left half screen is the map of where you're at, mm-hmm. regardless of if you've started like directions somewhere, which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it because I'm I was on roads over the weekend that i wasn't familiar with and they had the speed limits on there um right on the maps dashboard which i thought was cool and then off to the right it can break it up into a handful of different kind of breakouts um by default it's the locations that it thinks you may want directions to Mm -hmm. on the top and on the bottom is the music player um so basic music controls you know fast forward which is nice because other than other than your like on steering wheel controls like you had to switch the app to go pause the podcast or anything like that Mm -hmm. i don't think it was readily available there on on the screen until you actually did switch the app now now uh, now carplay is always nice about the last three things are on, on, the side. on the side and those and, are still there and those are still there well I, I, one thing i did like was it, it was also smart so like let's say i was like kind of well i went to google i like because i always use google maps to find places and then google i use maps doesn't auto rotate and it drives me no 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 all. but i hate using it for gps <laughs> but i like it to find like hey where's the nearest walmart okay. hey where's the na- nearest coffee shop um ways isn't good at that and and I just would rather use. I feel like Google has more information than Apple Maps, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or I don't want to use Apple Maps because it keeps interrupting my podcast because <laughs> I don't have all the sounds turned off on and everything. So, um, but it's smart that like so if I'm switching between them, it'll have the last three, but it won't have like two map apps. Like it's smart yeah. to say, oh, you're using this one. I'm not going to put this in the recent. So it's always going to be most likely like the message app a map and whatever music play, player I'm doing, whether it be podcasts or um, uh, uh, Google Music, typically, which does have a native app on there now. It did not a year before. Mm-hmm. So that's been nice to see that growing out too. But the, the cool thing too is, and I've noticed on the, that right-hand side is dynamic. Okay. And it's, of course, trying to figure out what it thinks you care about. Mm-hmm. But like when I get close to my house, it will like, bring up some of my home kit like turn on the lights type Ooh. stuff um it'll bring up like in the morning i've seen it like show my calendar over there like it thinks oh you may want to see what's up for the day um so the right hand panel is dynamic and it tries to kind of be ai like like series the series suggestions i don't know if you use that um i use it quite often because i have so many apps on my phone i just swipe down mm-hmm. and nine times out of ten siri knows what what i want to do um but it, it works out really well the the instead of having a picture of like your typical old school home button in the lower left it now has kind of like an app grid so okay. if you see those that four actually four by two set of blocks that takes you into the old school home screen and car play so i've been pretty impressed with it for the, like the f- couple times i've gotten to use it over the last week um completely useful so 
I hope they keep tweaking it. Um, there's not too much I can think that I would want, but I didn't think I would necessarily want this either. <laughs> well, I'll have you know my uh, 2012 um, Microsoft base uh, <laughs> sync uh, still has a blue screen. So um, there's that. So, um, well, while you were uh, having fun with your car, I was having fun with... Uh, there's some in, uh, really interesting stuff happening in Pokemon Go this week. Uh, we've talked about how they've been really interesting in, in you know, keeping the interest, right? Um, and I apologize, Producer Missy. I'm attempting to paste it in the document now. Uh, but the Team Rocket has appeared in Pokemon Go. And uh, to the point where I, I, I booted it up and I saw these messages of like, hey, you, and it, and it kind of came <laughs> in as like a kind of bits and pieces mystery kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, hey, some of these Pokestops have a weird color to them. You know, go see what's going on. And, you go, and, and thankfully, I, I booted it up and sitting right here uh, in the studio, their Pokestop right next door at the church was a Team Rocket takeover stop. And instead of spinning it and you get objects, it's actually um, it turns into a, a a trainer battle with a member of Team Rocket. What? Yeah, and they whooped my butt. Like who has who has a three thousand CP Squirtle? It was pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, I kept I kept fighting. Is that those. still going? So it looks normal to me next door it does uh they it, i think they change um, oh, here and okay. there so um and apparently as as they're you know kind of teasing here this is going to be an ongoing thing there have been things where there's been like like looks like there was some letters i saw you know statements from team rocket and everything and and they're saying that this you know there was a <laughs> there was a friday invasion in new york city by members of team rocket fan it, it, it's it's you know, they've been doing the regular events and everything. Um, and, and I've been getting these updates about, like, for this hour, you need to do this kind of stuff, right? And it's all about, and there's even from their Pokemon Go uh, Twitter account, um, while you were distracted with the little stunt we pulled in New York, we mobilized our forces for a global team rocket invasion from 4 to 5 p.m. in your local time. We'll be taking over all Poco stops in your area, teehee. So there's, like, stuff like that happening. These very, like, timed How surprise events. How long is this going on for? I think this is. I think this is just going to be generally ongoing. Oh, okay. So, look for it. <laughs> so while I'm on vacation over the next. Oh, week, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. I can. There's a good time for you to be. So I'll be honest with you, and I'm sure this is the best thing for a company to have as far as you know, competition. Mm -hmm. I've kind of taken a step back from Pokemon mm -hmm. to go over to Wizards Unite, which is the same company, by the way. It's yeah. So so so. Uh, Niantic lost me to oh, themselves, uh, and and I'm having fun with it. I I play. That's kind of my new on the way to work, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get more in the habit of, and I'm gonna have to take a third phone with me or a third device. <laughs> because, oh, these problems you have, Chilla. Because oh, my thought man. process is in order to get back in, because my main primary. Playtime is on the way to and from work mm -hmm. when I'm not actually working on the way to and from work. Mm -hmm. um, and on the T, I can hit all the stops, especially now because we don't go through the tunnel because there's that lovely construction. So I got over Allentown. So there's more stops to stop at. So if I had two phones in front of me, I could play both games simultaneously. No, what you need, what you need is the uh, the Pokemon Go Plus, or Chachi has an off-brand one that you don't even have to press the button. So you could walk around while you're downtown and just be playing Pokemon without getting any response from it. But that doesn't does that give me like battles at the stops? No, but that's the it, it's. It's mostly just um, uh, collecting po Pokemon collecting attempts and the um, items from the stops. So you do get those check ins. Remember, they came up with those like when before we had all this other stuff you could do. Well, you had the watch so thing. That's what I'm talking about. The, the would blank. And, oh they, yeah, there was the watch, but now they did. They have the ball. Now they deprecated the watch, and the wa the ball does a little bit more, I think. Um, so well, your does your thing still work? Yeah, my thing still works. Yeah. My, my Pokemon so they didn't Go deprecate Plus. that. No, they didn't deprecate that, but they did the the watch app apparently. Mm -hmm. So I can't uh, supposedly I cannot go into my app on here. I don't know. Does it just disappear if that happens? I'm guessing it just that disappears. Seems, yeah, I don't see a Pokemon app on here anymore. 
Uh, Because I think they did that like early or yeah, mid June maybe, and they just kind of go away. Like I have so, but they integrated when they. I understand why they did that because they integrated into the health app. Mm. So one of the primary drivers for that was also to get your your walking Mm -hmm. miles in, which they Mm. got that, and that's really nice. And 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 I walked so much that I at least got the second tier this week on Pokemon Go. So I mean, I mean, my time is basically split between that and Doctor Mario. I have been playing some PlayStation Classic this week, by the way. Um, I did figure out getting uh, the PlayStation Classic on my my Facebook Live, <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's been kind of fun. Maybe some people noticed me um, uh, kind of uh, experimenting with that. I think what was that late Saturday night, perhaps? Um, so there's that. Do you have you, your phone in front oh, of you? Oh, you would like to share a photo with me. So I thought this was interesting. Unfortunately, I'm not connected in the system to see it, but what are you, what are you showing me here? It's sending. It's sent. So in the new iOS 13, I talking about Pokemon Go made me remember this. So and, and talking about the watch app and integrating into health app and all that kind of stuff. So you know how you used to get the message like this app yeah. is using well, background? I, blah, I, blah, I'm blah, blah, showing blah, blah, them blah. on video right now. So the, now you get a... Pokemon Go has used 12 locations in the background for the past three days. Do you want to continue allowing this? Hmm. And it actually pinpoints where where you were when it asked. Where where, where I was when... Well, because I allow Pokemon Go in the background so I yeah. can get all of that data. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, now it tells you actually what app accessed, like, woke up and used your device without your technical... In motion approval versus you've pre-approved it. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of says, and I just clicked always allow again. But I thought it was kind of neat that they now give you a little more in-depth information as into what what app is doing what where. So I thought it was pretty neat from a privacy I perspective. Like I like that. Because um, I know, I mean, I still get the, you know, hey, this app is still using, has been using your, your thing for the last three weeks or something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's cool. That's, that's a little bit more information there. So uh, producer Missy, you have an awesome thing as well, right? Turns on if I mic- turn my microphone hey. on, yes. Um, so we all joke around about the fact that, you know, Facebook seems to know what I'm thinking because I'm thinking about it and all of this, I, then all of a sudden I start seeing ads for it. Mm-hmm. Well, they've been working on a brain typing I- interaction, mm-hmm. um, and they've actually just had published an update on it. So, um, the brain reading computer interface—they're—they're they're working to help this, and it's similar to um, kind of speech assistance for those with speech disabilities. And they're they're hooking it up to different, you know, brain activities and functions that works with how you develop words and how you think of things. And it's kind of in the you know just learning to speak phase. But um, yeah, they they've come up with this really cool thing that it it's quick reading whole words and phrases from the brain. And Facebook is getting a little bit closer to making it happen. Uh, they had participants go through a multiple choice question and they spoke the answers out loud and an electrode essentially recorded which parts of the brain associated understanding and producing that speech in order to be able to track that. And they've been able to come up that the system could produce results with 61 to 76% accuracy compared to 7 to 20% that they expected to have it actually figuring it out. So it's kind of a step forward with regard to the plans for additional like tech with the brain and different functions as far as all that's concerned. I just thought it was kind of interesting. So, so I mean, are they, they they really are at this place where they're just looking for that next talk technology uh, <laughs> that they can integrate in. Right. Um, so, and it, so this is, this is fully, like, is this an in-house thing that they're they're with, or no? This is Facebook Facebook Reality Labs. Yeah, this is fact. in-house with Facebook, and they're working the, with with the University of California, San Francisco. Yes. Okay. Um, because they're wow. they're trying to get Facebook <laughs> closer to a non-invasive thought typing system, and it's a general technology that a university like that would be into too. Oh, absolutely. So makes a lot of sense. 
Oh boy, because well, hey, at least then then you don't have your phone up when you're driving, uh, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I said, like I said, I think that the aspect it's going to have for those that are nonverbal, mm-hmm. I, I think, is more so what I'm looking at it for. Yeah, with regard yeah. to that, um, I have friends who you know their children have learning disabilities and speech disabilities that uh, they they utilize like a talk table type of thing that has different words programmed into it that when they want to speak, they can kind of push the different buttons and it speaks. And I think that this would be kind of an interesting concept to, to see how that would play out with them under the circumstances that they yeah. can't formally, you know, create that speech. But if they're thinking those thoughts, obviously they, they're thinking it to the point where they want to be able to say whatever they're saying and this, this is kind of in line with uh, uh, the recent Elon Musk talking about us getting brain implant computers, too. Yeah. So be interesting to see what they, they do with this. Awesome. Hey, so in the meantime, while we're fueling all these uh, future ideas and talking about them here on the show, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, our friends here in Beachview, Carnegie, East End, and PNC Park, feeding the awesome cast here uh, some delicious pepperoni pizza supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza our good friends down there so go check them out let them know that you heard about them on the awesome cast at any of those locations i think they know about us at all of them and uh thank you to them for uh supporting the show so it was a light week on the it was a light news week in general i think uh, but first, I want to—I do, do want to give a shout out to our friend. I check in with our friend uh, Chachi over at uh, thegamejourney.com. Uh, he is uh, again trying to go through a journey of a thousand one games that you're supposed to play before you die, and he's up to some favorites, Chilla. He's up to Ocarina of Time and Paper Mario this week. Oh wow! So, and uh, and a little known one, Jet, Jet Force Gemini. I think he was just getting into that last last week. So. So go check that out at thegamejourney.com and uh, see where it's one man, 1,001 games, 1,001 reviews. So I know he's been diligently getting through that as well. Um, Chilla, uh, tell me about the AR art project that's happening in New York. So this caught my eye today. It was another, I think, 9 to 5 MAC article. But um, do you remember when we talked about going kind of on the different tour walks with Google Glass. Mm-hmm. Like Google Glass enabled people that were either... Oh, with the field trips? With or... the field trips, right. Where if you were either unable because you were across the, the world and couldn't afford to go see something, mm-hmm. or you were handicapped and couldn't couldn't actually go out and, and tour parks and do certain types of things, or you wanted to take a photography walk kind of through a foreign location that you not, couldn't necessarily make it to... Google Glass kind of enabled that with yeah, giving the yeah. the the first person point of view of what it was like to walk through mm-hmm. a certain area. Um, Apple to me is kind of taking that next step, and they're creating AR walks. Um, give me one second. Um, I'm trying to look for the this list. Is, this is this is in San Francisco, in London, New York. San Francisco. I can't remember the other cities. Uh, uh, Paris, about. New York, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, so so you'll be able to take like these AR type walks through those areas, but it's not like a remote tour. It's you're meant to be there, and there are AR type sculptures and artwork throughout the cities which i thought was a very neat concept what i'd like to see with this is can we get a mashup where i can use vr to take the ar walk through the city i can't get to (laughs) Um, yeah this doesn't help me when I, i i can't get to new york city you guys are not in pittsburgh uh, doing this thing so like it kind of kills the experience right yeah but what what i wonder too is could we create some kind of underground art movement Mm -hmm. where have you ever seen like the 3d painting type stuff? And I know Google, I think actually makes the app. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. No, no, no. I, I've, 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 it's like the graffiti style app. Yeah, no, I played with this app, uh, in, in, uh, on the vibe or something. They've had it over at our our friends from looking for group. They were with us last week. But imagine if you could do that in 
VR and then mm -hmm. put that like on. Imagine if you could paint all of IGA in graffiti, <laughs> but it wasn't real. Yeah. And then you could take these walks through there. I, I just think it would be super cool. Mm -hmm. It would be like a whole different world. It mm -hmm. would be like the upside down. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. Where you could kind of like, you could do graffiti. You could do whatever you wanted wherever. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone could kind of walk through those installation. Uh, hopefully it is something. Techniques. Again, with, with screen recorder that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody like does a screen recording walking through some of these places. Um, and even like looking at the site and we, we, we click through to the Today at Apple and uh, uh, Dave Podner's telling us uh, a tiny short podcast in the chat room. He says uh, they also have AR tutorials and Apple, Apple stores everywhere. If you look, uh, clicking through, this is part of the uh, Today and Apple um, um, stuff that they do too. Uh, let's see. Uh, the touch the session in store sessions are going to touch on the basics of uh, creating AR using Swift Playgrounds. Uh, Swift is their their coding application, and now this would be, um, yeah, play around with AR in code. Uh, so with the the Swift Playgrounds. So again, kind of just um, opening that AR up. I was kind of waiting for this in the next step of things mm -hmm. because like they've done a bunch of VR stuff like the uh, Van Gogh AR. Right. And I was looking when we were talking about that a few months ago. Yeah. I was thinking when is it going to step into something like this with the AR option? Uh, let's see. Ponder's also saying uh, from 9 to 5 act, uh, Mac there's uh, also a new in-store session which walks customers through using Swift Ooh. Playgrounds to create their own AR experience and Apple will be debuting an AR art installation in every Apple store. There That's you go. That's awesome. That's going to get people in the door. More crowds. I kind of might as well just put a pokey stop in there too. I, while they're at well, it. yeah. Well, it's okay. There's a Starbucks not too far away <laughs> in most cases. Um, I kind of want to do this now because I'm really curious about like if I can go take a course over there and, and start playing with uh, uh, AR development. You know, I mean, there's some. I think interesting uh, projects that we could do with uh, some of our clients around here. So, um, but anyways, interesting to look at that. Um, and, and, and Hey, it's another way to get, because everything, everything in, in the uh, Mac stores that like their training sessions, I, you know, they have final cut sessions, I guess. Right. But mm -hmm. nothing has really kind of piqued my interest until, until this AR stuff um, to be able to do something like that. So we'll see. I wonder if they'll add this to, to, and maybe he said it. I don't know if Dave said it. Are they adding it to the Swift Playgrounds too? So there's like the Swift Playgrounds, which you can download the app, mm -hmm. and it's like a bunch of Swift tutorials on your iPad. Yeah, um, where you can kind of code right there, and you can learn. There's there's classes. I wonder if they start adding it to that as well, where because not everyone is within proximity, right, um, to the to the Apple stores. Um, and next year, rumors are back facing time of flight for the rear camera apple is going hard on ar uh says partner in the chat room hmm that that, that has to be the big play this year right mm -hmm. is is the ar like, when they're adding that third the, the from what we've seen they're adding that third lens mm -hmm. i know we don't like to talk rumors but there's a number of cad drawings and molds that have been leaked showing yeah. that like triangle Type lens configuration. <laughs> Amanda's going to dig around and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I am now downloading Swift Playgrounds to my iPad. Is she so. going to dig under the floorboards in the Apple Store? <laughs> or is that where they hide their information? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, anyways, let's see what else we got here. Uh, a lot of fun stuff here. So we got the um, Chilla. Uh, over the last week, I uh, turned on notifications for TikTok. And I get notifications. And it was some girl dancing. Another one was a girl with a, just a giant, overly fluffy cat. Okay. And every time this happens, I say, damn it, Chilla. <laughs> and you watch it. And I watched it. And then I say, damn it, Chilla. But then do you scroll at least through like three or four of them? Uh, every once in a while. It depends on how much time I got going on. Do they oh. make you smile? I... <laughs> do, they, do they bring joy? Um, do they spark joy in your right. life? The cat does, I guess. I, I guess the cat does a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, but there, there is. Uh, it seems oh, like that's a long... the first. I got, a, I got an ad. Oh, 
Oh. I got an ad in TikTok. I've never gotten an ad in TikTok. Well, if you weren't eventually, so... Um, and then I listened to one podcast and talked about how we really shouldn't be spending all of our time in Chinese apps because we're completely playing into whatever China is going to do next. I don't know. And then I felt bad. And then it's like, you know what? It's TikTok, whatever. Um, so I don't know. I was really conflicted this week, Chilla, um, in general. So, But there was a lot of TikTok news, as if they knew. Um, the TikTok owner, ByteDance, confirms plans to produce their own smartphone. Are you ready for your TikTok phone? Chilla. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't think it's just going to be a TikTok phone. It's just, but it's the company and they're going to make a phone. It's like if, if, hey, Facebook tried making a phone, didn't they? So did it Amazon. Mm hmm. Did they work? Are they still here? Microsoft tried making a phone and they yeah, but couldn't make it work. They also made stuff. They also made stuff, yeah, but uh, I just don't see. Uh, but yeah, according to this, uh, Byte Dance. By the way, didn't know the parent name was Byte Dance. That's B Y T Dance. Uh, B Y T E. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's following a deal with Smartisan, also a company I never heard of before, uh, that they made earlier this year. Uh, so hold on, let me dig up some details here uh, from when I scanned this before. I uh, the, the so. While you're digging that up, I have some questions. Okay, you have some questions. I have some questions. We'll get some answers. Have you been so, TikToking? Have you been TikToking? No. You've been making Kate, Kate yells at me about the, the, the no TikTok, the non TikTok, the non Snapchat, and the non Instagram. Yeah, that you should I, really I don't be do. on Instagram. Like, that's like. Well, I'm on Instagram. I just don't do much with Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the difference. Um, so, as far as this plan to introduce their own smartphone. Mm hmm. Is it simply going to be a smartphone that functions for the purpose of doing TikTok posting? Oh, I don't think it, so. It can't be. I mean, no. that, I mean that would it's be obviously like, going to be a phone, but I mean, is, is it going to have like some super, that, super duper is, special feature that connects it directly into my I'm TikTok? I'm sure TikTok will be pre-installed. And maybe I'll have a fancy camera that works better with TikTok. That's but what I'm getting this at. This company also has expanded into messaging and is working on its own music streaming service. So, I mean, this is not just the TikTok company. You know, this is not just like, you know, how Snapchat just launches things that work with Snapchat like those glasses, right? And this is this is this is a general tech company that's doing Well, I this. realize it's general tech because mm -hmm. why would you why would you put a phone into the market if it wasn't available for other people not on your service? That doesn't make sense. Because you want to introduce other people to your service through and a smartphone. Apparently Smartisan is uh, that they acquired um, is also a phone company. So they're just kind of continuing their product lines with it. Uh, to do see, I could see more use out of like Snapchat creating a phone. Mm -hmm. There was a total gimmick around everything dissolves from the phone after five minutes. Yes. Chilla. <laughs> It's like a burner phone. It's it's a perfect spy phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this so phone will self destruct. The snap, in five the, seconds. It's the snap phone. It's everything's gone in a snap. Chilla, how many Nintendo based games are you on your phone right now? Nintendo based games. Nintendo based mobile apps. Like does on your Dr. Phone. Mario count? Yes. And, and the, Mario Run exactly. counts. And uh, Pokemon Go technically. Pokemon Go. So you got a few of them. I, I got a few. Do you have Dragalia Lost? No. Is Dragalia Lost has surpassed one million dollars in revenue and is now Nintendo's second most successful game. Do you want to wager a guess on its most successful game? Pokemon Go is not in this list. Or wait, is it? I don't think it's in this list because I don't think it qualifies because it's technically not a Nintendo game. I don't, I've never. I don't even know what Dragalia Lost is. It was a. It was a game. I played a little bit of it. It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, it's an. R, it's an action RPG. And it's a freemium game, and it is actually seconded by. Did you know Fire Emblem Heroes was on the on the mobile phone? I didn't know that. Okay, and then third is Animal Crossing, which I did let Katie know that uh, Hello Kitty is now part of that, and uh, followed by Super Mario Run and Doctor Mario World. Doctor Mario World, of course, is only a few weeks uh, out from launch, so uh, and it's already at seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. Uh, Super Mario Run got seventy-two million dollars, and and I I seem to recall Super Mario Run like not being seen as a runaway success financially for them, when in you know articles about it in the past, right? 
So uh, Nintendo doing very well with this. <laughs> what, do we, and maybe uh, my mind is failing me. Do we know? Do we know exactly when Mario Kart's going to launch? No, you were part of the. Don't beta. rub it in. Don't rub it in. Thankfully, I've dedicated my life to Doctor Mario World, and I've worked my way all the way up to level. I don't know. I got to be in the one fifties by now. I just I just unlocked the second half of like the fourth world or something. Um, so uh, yeah, no, Doctor Mario is the thing I. But do. Mario Kart is should be coming soon. Yes, yes, it is. Which I'm sure will. I think that's gonna at least. Beat Am- Animal Crossing. Um, I'm, I'm currently, fairly quick. By the way, I'm currently on stage 141 on Doctor Mario. But how much money have you spent? Zero. That's the problem. That is a problem. So they're not er- they're not earning revenue off of you. <laughs> no, not off of me. C- certainly not off of me. You know, and it is so interesting because you 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 know get so many hearts for attempts at the stages. If you're not good at the stage, you'll run through your hearts. Um, but versus, you can play all day. Mm-hmm. So. I, I don't know, and I'm not enticed. The, the thing is, I'm usually the one that they get, they, they, you know, they got the 10 bucks out of me for Mario, you know, Mario Run. They, they got a, I don't know, more than a few bucks out of me off, out of a Pokemon Go. Um, hell, I bought the device, right? Mm-hmm. So, so maybe at some point down the line, I may drop a couple bucks. I, I, I maybe just out of guilt at this point because I, I, I literally would play this game. Developers are starving. <laughs> they can't put food on their tables. You can't cough up 99 cents. <laughs> oh, I'll buy a diamond or something. Fine. Uh, but uh, works for me. Um, but hey, it's it's weird though. With you. Like we, it seems like we popped up out of nowhere to this world where Nintendo's on mobile devices and just owning it. And I, I did really, really expect anything different uh, out of that. So, uh, hey, you know what else? I... I have no expectations. No, that's the wrong. This is a bad segue. This is a really bad <laughs> you segue. Have no expectations. Though, uh, you know what else that you may not have expectations more that may surprise you? All right, Chilla. How about our friends at Sparkle Dragon's Magical Emporium? Whether you're looking for a custom handcrafted gift or something to soothe the soul, Sparkle Dragon's Magical Emporium has you covered. Uh, sure, you can stop by their website at sparkledragon.com, but if you're in the area, nothing beats a nice cup of tea and a chat with Joyce. So go check her out at sparkledragon.com. Did somebody just walk in here? Yeah, he looks really confused. Yeah, he probably think is he going to walk into the barbershop? I don't know. I bet he is. He thought we were the barbershop. Yeah, but he looked at this cutout in your window. He looked at the cutout in the window and, and walked he looked in here. At you. He looked at me and didn't realize that I'm live on the internet. And you're talking. you're not you're not cutting hair. And I'm not going to I'm cut, not cutting hair and I'm not going to talk to him. <laughs> it's so weird. I should have cut to the camera. Um, but, uh, this is why we lock the door sometime. <sighs> All right. At least he still had a shirt on. Um, this has been a problem. Trust me. When we do the show at like 11 o'clock on Mondays, sometimes things happen. Uh, so did you see this one? The, uh, the, the Instagram replacement? Cause apparently we're all looking for, everybody is desperately looking for the next thing, right? Like, I guess TikTok is that thing. I did not... Is this the Poolside FM? No, 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 no. You want to talk about Poolside FM? I haven't seen it, but I've seen like a bazillion posts about it. <laughs> okay, what do you what do you know about Poolside FM? Isn't, one, isn't it just some like old school? It looks like an old school player. That it, yeah, it, it's basically a it's a playlist player, and it looks like an old like you know '90s Mac desktop of some sort. And they play the videos and it says that API in the in the background and everything it's uh it was launched in 2014 but apparently um it's kind of had a resurgence or something um it, it's it's a playlist of songs from the 80s from on si- soundcloud on soundcloud some interesting pastels for you uh so if you want to go check out poolside uh dot fm uh, it relaunched and um it's it's just one of those weird smart virtual um um radio stations it, it was just kind of a cool thing that i found this week so uh go check that out um anyways no the thing the thing that uh we should i think uh potter uh, if i believe uh, uh commented on this as well um this is nothing new but it is called if i can find that article again day flash day flash 
That's the one. Yeah. Did, did you find the article yes, again? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, the article talks about, again, this is from fstoppers.org, and this is one of those, hey, guys, we should try this new thing instead of Instagram um, because I need friends over there, and I have a blog. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it, it's, again, a more um, – back to the basics, Jill. Hey, remember when uh, Instagram used to be about photography? Also, have you seen – Remember any- when you couldn't even upload a picture to Instagram? No. You, you had to just – Use the camera. You know what's fun? You know what's fun? Because we were, you brought up Detroit uh, when we were t- talking before the show. Because I shared something recently. There's Instagram pictures in there. And they're so tiny. <laughs> 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 what were we doing? Also, probably took those pictures with an iPhone 4 at the time. Uh, so, I, again, I, I don't know if this is... Oh, this is, this is good. We actually have a review from Amanda... In the chat room, uh, she said she's used it. Um, not good at all, confusing to use, and not much engagement. Well, that's going to be the problem with a lot of these new platforms, right? It's going to take a lot. Mm-hmm. Like to me, it's going to take a multi-day outage. I have, I have one word. What? Plurk. Plurk or um, Ello. How about oh, Ello? Ello was even worse. How about Brightkite? <laughs> Brightkite? No, no. Brightkite. No, Brightkite was my jam for a while there. I liked Brightkite. Brightkite was great. Also, I was using I was using Brightkite on a flip phone. Depending on the age of some of these people listening, they only know like half of what we're talking about right that now. That is true, but that's the internet for you. Um, Just, is for, do a lot of people even use Foursquare anymore? I don't know. I, I uh, it's is it Foursquare or has it's it? Swarm. It's not it became Swarm. Swarm. So here's the fun thing: we we talked about this a little bit around South by Southwest because they did an experiment where they made South by Southwest area information public to show you exactly how much they have because they're integrated in so many other applications. Ah. So you're not act if you don't think you're on Foursquare, you might be on Foursquare. Like Yelp check in. Yeah, like. yeah. Like I, I think it's like stuff like that. So I um, mean that's what Dave's saying, uh it would take something really major to switch from Instagram. And that's the thing. And and, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong Instagram, despite the fact that it's so much more and on top of things, they haven't really done anything to, um, by the way, Complex just posted a video on my TikTok. Um, They really haven't done anything that dissuades photographers in Instagram. Is that correct? I would would say no. I will say I lost, I think, 30 bucks on one of those stupid, hey, buy this in an ad type thing. (laughs) Well, yeah. Oh, no. No, no. Instagram ads are freaking dangerous. Because half the time, it is something I want to buy. Like, really bad. Um, and, all, and now I'm looking at sparkly Nikes on, on uh, TikTok. Thank you. It's also a sponsor thing because it's complex. That's interesting. Anyways. Um, uh, now I'm just watching TikTok. Thank you, Chilla. Thanks, Chilla. See? What Did you see a magic trick? It was, a ma- it was like a magic trick, yeah. It was a guy like standing, like when he's got no chair, and the guy was like checking out underneath him, trying to figure out how he's doing it. Ah, anyways, um, so not that app. Um, so, by the way, if there's an article that says it's time to say goodbye to said app that everybody's using, it's some somebody really want just is really desperate for for new friends on that new app. Um, Chilla, yes. Do you have any ultraviolet movies? I don't think I do. You don't anymore. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> the locker's been emptied. As of tomorrow on Wednesday. So if you're hearing this, make sure you have linked your uh, ultraviolet uh, digital movie locker. Uh, chill, I'm hearing that. I hear everything you're doing. <laughs> you can he- Wait. <laughs> yes. If I, turn, if I turn my head what? and talk, you claim like... I'm, yeah, you're, you're gone. You're I'm gone. gone. But if I like run my finger along the edge of the... The mic stand. It's like yeah, it's vibrating through the mic. It's that's 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 physics, man. <laughs> it's witchcraft. <laughs> it's witchcraft. It's a podcast of witchcraft. Um, but Ultraviolet's movie locker is closing Wednesday. If you haven't had an opportunity to link it to something like Movies Anywhere, it will ingest all of those movies um, into the services, and you can use them in places, and it won't just go away. So your copy of, you know, I don't know, the uh, the 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 original Spider-Man two uh, won't go away. I'm what? So it was weird because I got a notification that it was going away, but I. 
can't figure out if I actually had anything in there. And I, I'm wondering if I saw, here's where I think I, I caused myself. Uh Oh, uh Oh, maybe not pain, but just humor. So you remember movies anywhere yes. when they first started? Yes. If you linked, depending on how many services you linked was how many free movies you got. That's how I got happy feet. So I think I may have gone and signed up for like an ultraviolet account, even though I didn't have anything in there. So you could link it there, and get the thing? So I could link it and get the free movie. So you're getting all the notifications, but it's like, hey, make sure you you sync your empty locker. Yes. Yeah. I mean, me, I'm worried because I know... Like this thing where I buy the thing and it's a digital copy and everything. By the way, I still get messed up when movies are not on movies anywhere. Like I was really pissed off about when I bought Bumblebee and now I had to put it on Amazon and now it's only on Amazon. Oh, yeah. What, what movie house is that? What movie? Uh, Paramount. So they're Paramount is they not must, connected. They're not connected. Yeah. They don't allow. And I still have that. I still have that a little bit of. When I linked everything, like it sucked a bunch of movies in that I didn't know I had that, like you know, Google Play gave me like the first X Men for free and the first Transformers for free, Mm -hmm. Um, and Elf, (laughs) Elf or Alf? No, Elf. Okay. No, but I do have the first season of Elf, Alf on DVD. Um, Thanks, mom. Uh, But anyways, she's still out there. Uh, What was the point I was getting at here? Oh yeah, so but they're still like, oh hey, I'd like to play watch Transformers. Oh, I need to go to my Google Movies account, and now I put this thing over on Amazon, and now I'm just waiting for Paramount to get on board, and just all those gets sucked in there. That's the noise it makes when you suck into your movies anywhere. Um, (laughs) Also, did I did I say on the show about how I connected my Xbox 360 to uh, Movies Anywhere, and it it shows all the new movies. But it also shows all of the bonus content as individual titles. And it's a mess. That's nice. Because Is that it, a feature? It's a feature. But it's also ingesting that like new stuff into Xbox 360. So it's not really made for it, I don't think. So, But it'll work. Uh, I'm guessing they're not pour, pouring a lot of time and energy into their no, 360 client. No, 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 no. Why, why, you know, oh, I have to scroll through the 15 extra features to uh, uh, Infinity War to get to the movie, you know, so. Well, is there, is there an Amazon Prime app for 360? I, whether it's still, still supported, who knows? But it, I mean, that's where I've found like, hey, if I can't find but it, but this it, app. Prime does it weird because Prime will just put the extra features after the movie. Right. But what I'm saying is if you don't want the mess of a UI. and there's That's the, true. Because Movies true. Anywhere is syncing that. But also, but also generally, if you're on the Xbox 360, it's kind of good luck. Yeah. WWE doesn't work anymore. I know that. They just killed a bunch of uh, uh, programs. There are some people. Dude, so this is this is an interesting uh, um, cross section I got to see a few weeks ago, and did, did I mention the WWE Network update on here? I don't feel like I would have. I don't think you did. Um, so they sent an email out letting people know, hey, by the way, we're updating the app, and hey, by the way, um, first of all, you need to re re log in, and if you have these devices, it's not going to work anymore. It was like you know the PlayStation Three, but the weird thing was Samsung TVs. If you had a Samsung TV older than like two years, it wouldn't work anymore. Um, I wonder if it, Samsung changed that that app because inter- remember they mm-hmm. started to pour money and more more money into Tizen, the OS that runs on their watches and a couple other technology, like a couple other Internet of Things type devices. I wonder if the older Samsung TVs are running some pre-gen, non-upgradable operating system mm-hmm. and get and so i mean for think about it though they're they're having to create an application for how many different endpoints it gets that's not cheap uh let's see here's the list and then let me know if this any of this seems out of line it was also interesting to see this kind of like information list news item on wrestling stuff two months ago by the way i just got i just got a notification from dragala loss the second most uh, <laughs> profitable Nintendo game on the mobile. Uh, Amazon Fire tablets, which I don't think they've made any of those for a while, right? Uh, the third generation. The Fire tablets? The Fire tablets are still being pumped out. Yeah. Well, they're not going to get a WWE Network app now. Uh, Apple TV, third generation or earlier. That's, I think. Well, that's I, the old non that's, Yeah, that's the old non app one. Uh, LG TVs, uh, 2016 or earlier. PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. Windows 10, PCs, and tablets. Now, you can just use a browser. 
Um, there's just no... So that would be my question for like the Fire tablet, right? Can I just use the browser? So I think that's the big thing here because the new the new um, version of it looks like one of those that's more... Because uh, it just launched like this week and you, you go to it, it's like, well, this looks like a web app, right? And I think, I think in most of these cases that have browsers, um, like your Fire tablets and your Windows, you know, Windows 10 PCs, um, I think that's just a movement. Well, the 360 has a browser. You can download yeah. Internet Explorer. On I don't it. know if that supports the site because, I mean, how old of an Internet Explorer is it? Or Edge or whatever it is. So, oh, I bet you it supports it. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> Report back next week. <laughs> I'm going to launch that at home and play it on my minimal home Internet. Um, hot spotted to my phone. This is, hey. Not a lot going on there. That's it. I told that to Comcast rep. No, I don't have internet at home. I know. I'm the weird one. <sighs> Anyways, um, where are we at time wise here? Three <laughs> hours. Oh, it's time oh, for Chilla to me. go to bed. It's time for a nap. It's, it's, chill, it's chill a nap time. It's, By the way, I think I think you need to move your um, time. It's uh, time for sleep. I think you move your block there because we're actually blocking the, the useful light now. <laughs> so, oh my, too dark. <laughs> you're too dark. Hold on. Let's just move. Just pull that. Pull that over there. Uh, let's see, Sean. Sean can move over there right a little here. bit. There you go. Heart crotch for the internet. <laughs> That's a good shot. That's a good shot, Chilla. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't see the front of it. <laughs> oh, it's just it's just, and the back is just brown cardboard. Well, it, now you can see what was. Oh, right there in we the, go. There it is. Um, Apple confirms the Apple Card is coming in August. Are you are you ready for your Apple card? I kind of um, want the card. I don't know if I'll use it, but I kind of want the physical card. It seems we, fun. So here's maybe I'm the oddball one out here. I think it would be more interesting. So you know how you can add money to like the wallet? Yeah. To the card that's or in somebody there. sends me money in the in the wallet and I keep forgetting how to transfer the it Apple out to the Cash use it. app. Yeah. Like I want a card for my cash. Like, I don't being... want another I don't want another credit card that I'm gonna rack up credit on. Mm -hmm. But if I could put money in like that account, like a checking account. Yeah. And use or, or like I use PayPal. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. me give me that card that's in wallet mm -hmm. in this format. And I would I would use it. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not signing up for another credit card. It's always funny. I <laughs> We, 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 we pay we pay some of our guys in, in PayPal and like I, they're always say yeah I always forget that's there and then I go on Amazon and I have some money to spend like stuff like that <laughs> you know so anyways um, it, 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 I'm curious about it it was kind of a, a, an interesting thing Apple was becoming the everything hey remember we were talking about that other company well I would the TikTok guys do a phone why is Apple doing half the stuff they have you know we, we, we kind of know it's all profitable stuff but um I mean, but it is, it is going to be Apple turning into a PayPal and a, and a Venmo kind of situation, isn't it? So I have a PayPal card and I use my PayPal card all the freaking time. It's basically my point of access to all my bank accounts, right? And and it's just easier to do. And um, oh, and my bank is uh, now on my Apple wallet. Finally, after how many years? <laughs> so um, finally... I'm always interested in this. I'm always interested in Wise because I, I really like their cameras here, and they seem to be coming out with a little bit of everything. Um, they, they 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 released uh, some fairly cheap light bulbs. Yeah, their recently. light bulbs are like ten bucks a piece. Yeah, ten bucks a piece. The only thing I wish, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, you can't get like a physical fake light switch to go with their light bulbs. Can I don't you? think so. So that's the one thing. So there's a couple room like like a closet type light that I want to put on a light switch without having to reach up and pull the pull chain. I also want to be able to control it with a, with a train and Google and everybody else. But I want that remote on off style switch. So wise, if you're listening, I'm sure you can put together one of those for like 10 bucks mm -hmm. and sell it in a kit. I'd be totally happy. How about how about a pair of two wall plugs for $15? That's their a new one. Pretty good deal. That's the, is that going to be the final price, or is that like the early adopter price? Uh, it's on the pre-order. Uh, so, uh, so this is um, it's gonna it's gonna work with uh, Amazon and Google Assistant, but not Apple's HomeKit. That's surprising. I don't think any of their stuff does, does it? Like it's been actually it's all it's been all about Amazon. I thought um, up until now. 
could be mistaken. Yeah, I guess my Wise Cam, I'm not accessing. I access via the app on my phone. Mm-hmm. I access via the. It's on Amazon. A train screen. Uh, the yeah, Google yeah. Screen. Because remember, I said I set up my Wise Cam on on uh, on on Echo, and then realized I have nothing with the screen, and it won't do anything else. Do you have a Fire TV? Stick? I I do. So you can use that. Oh, so what I need to do when I get internet in my house, uh, now that I yell at Xfinity people, um, um, so what I need to do is have the Fire Stick at home. I have like a first gen now. Is that still going to work? Do you have the voice remote? Yeah, uh, no. If you, I think if you pick up the but voice if I use remote, the, but if I use the app, I can. You get a voice via that. I think you, I don't you, know. you do voice remote on the app, I believe. Then you should be able to do it. Hmm. Let me bring that in and try it out. Then try it out. I gotta go find my stick. I think it's in. I have a basket with uh, video game controllers that I never use, and I think that's right in there. So, well, my co-hosts are showing up for the next show, Chilla. So we should probably wrap this up. But first, I want to give a shout out to us uh <laughs> we do a lot of stuff around here uh you know this is kind of the cornerstone of what we do here tuesdays on the podcast but we do a lot of stuff uh here from the bowels of sorgatron media studios from sporting events to music video production i actually just signed on for another music video coming up here in a couple weeks chilla uh with our friend nick i've been looking forward to that uh we do conferences everywhere in between the team at sidekick media services has you covered as a sidekick to your superhero project or hell we even do we just kind of fill in staffing a lot too we're helping with a boxing event we're helping with uh of course replay fx streaming with our friends at work hard pittsburgh and looking for group uh, a lot of fun going on there uh as a sidekick to your superhero project what next big thing can you help with find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com all right a lot of stuff going on again uh pittsburgh current i do not have any special guests uh announced but um but our friend our friend the rookie of the year was here in studio and um, and responded to Mad Mike because he was recounting Rookie of the Year uh, because it's like I guess his favorite movie and uh, and and but he had to respond and because he got some details wrong. So if you go to the Wrestling Mayhem Show Instagram uh, page, is probably the uh, easiest way to find his response video to Mike. And I think I also have Mike's original Rookie of the Year. Um, let's just call it an excitement video um, over there from last Monday night. Uh, some fun stuff happening there. And also stay tuned. Check out our podcast on the network. Our good friends. I know Thrifty has been doing a lot of stuff. Toddy's been. I've been literally seeing Toddy everywhere, mostly all over the neighborhood. And uh, like across the street, getting tacos. I don't know. He's a, he's just he's just all over the place. Our friends, the uh, Bardic Mystery Tour, uh, Bolt Sports Pittsburgh, and so many more. Bolt Pittsburgh, of course, uh, to another partner of the network. Uh, so thank you, everybody, and hey, shout out to Tiny Shutter Podcast because Dave's always hanging out here in the uh, in the. <laughs> in the uh chat room oh an update one of his co-hosts is on day flash and he just joined he missed he, i missed the hashtags he says hmm. hmm uh so thank you chilla at chilla on the twitters john chilla on the facebooks and producer missy is around there as well out there hi not on instagram well hi. you're on instagram i'm on everybody instagram. everybody find missy sorg are you missy sorg on there or rebellious flaw i forget uh, I don't even know if I have a personal Instagram account. I you use it do. For the, I know I've tagged you in one. I use it for the multiple businesses that I do. Go go look for her on Instagram and just tag her a bunch or find whatever her last photo is from 2016 and just comment it so she gets all the notifications and say, "Hey Missy, hey Missy, post something, post something, post something. What what's your lunch today? What, 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 what's what, happening? What's your handle on Plurk? What's your handle but on Plurk? That's <laughs> that's why I don't post as much anymore. Plurk's still. There. I haven't baked anything in forever. Oh, because I used to post my baked goods and people would Whoa, yell at me you made waffles last wednesday for a production in here I did waffles with women wrestlers on the indie wrestling network uh that just launched uh, the yesterday actually so oh i got it i heard the click i didn't know if that was a turning on click or a turn off click uh sorgatron on the twitter sorgatron media a lot of stuff going on uh we'll be at replay fx you'll see me at the music stage on friday and saturday night um so not only am I a big fan of Bit Brigade, I love that I get to stream Bit. I think they're here this week. They're, they've been here every year, so I, don't, I can't imagine them not. Amanda had a birthday and needs a cake. There you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.